How much time we got? We got a minute? Yeah, so it's about Let me grab my phone. Let me get a little social. We're about to go live right now with uh, this man right here, living legend, Kyle Cushman in the building. You probably smoked his weed. You know you've seen him around everywhere you go. Look at that, from one Jew to another Jew. We are, are we related, G? Jumigos. Are we related? The two Jumigos. So I'm gonna do a little quick like two minute intro and then I'm gonna bring you on. <laughs> two minutes. We good. I gotta keep everyone energized and all the weed I consume, I need a fucking Red Bull. I know there's hell of your choices, but I don't give a fuck. Well, so you, gotta, you gotta hit the tag button. Red Bull. Gets me wings, so I can stay higher. Red Bull. Gives you wings. Ready, that is? So you can get higher. Yeah, I stay higher. You ready to start the show? Man, it hates the camera. Let's go! So Red Bull to me is like makeup to women. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Like. It's women, not starting the engine, it's you know, Like, women, they're already naturally beauty, they're already naturally beautiful, but they just add makeup to enhance their beauty. Okay. So it just makes them look better. They don't need it necessarily, but some of them like it to just enhance some of their features. So that's what I do with Red Bull. I'm already naturally energetic, but I just enhance the energy with the Red Bull. That was a good one, save that. That was a good one. <laughs> that was a really good one. Yeah! Well, welcome everybody back to another edition of the podcast. You already know who it is, the highest host, Mr. Luscious Locks right here, Adam Ill. And it's going to be an amazing show today. I got a, a, a long time, a, he's become a friend over the years. I've seen him throughout all the cannabis cups at all the weed events. I've probably smoked a lot of his weed. I uh, probably read a couple of things he wrote. I got a, a good buddy in the building and he'll be joining me in a second. All right, I'll tell you who it is. Kyle Cushman is in the building. What? He's out here, but I just want to uh, welcome y'all back. I appreciate everyone listening right now, wherever you're at. If you're in the car or the grow room or at work or at your mom's house or your house or in the room or wherever the fuck you're doing trimming, appreciate y'all because you could be doing anything in the world right now and you're here with me. So let's have a great show today. And uh, I just wanted to talk about one thing real quick because it just happened to me and I'm kind of upset and I think it's going to change my 2019. So before I get you, Kyle, let me just go on a minute rant real quick. I've been getting real tired of my fucking backwoods lately, all right? And I'm gonna show you too, Kyle, because I know you've seen a lot of vegetation, seen a lot of plants, and they haven't been consistent. Like, I've been smoking backwoods for many, many years, and you know, people always been talking shit, but I like it. I don't know if it's because I'm Middle Eastern. Have they been or, bought by Pepsi? I, I have no idea what they have been doing, but their packs haven't been consistent lately. You know, they've been stems, they've been dry, they've been miscolored, they've had fucking <laughs> issues, there's holes, whatever, shit we deal with. But lately, I've just been getting more and more of these like black spots on these they, and I don't know you know you're, just, you're not supposed to open these you know you're supposed to just Sorry. smoke them the way you smoke them but if they open this tell, tell me Kyle what does that look like real quick what is what do those black spots look like does that look like anything is that just like miscolored leaf is that is that are those mold spores? Is that just should I even consume that? I don't know. I'd I'd, like, I'd check it out under a microscope. But I mean, if you've been doing this for a while and it looks different, then that would definitely make like, me suspicious too. Like fuck that! This is going in my lungs, and I'm burning it. I don't know if I after I burn it, if their chemical compound changes and it creates new fucking toxins that I'm consuming, and then all of a sudden I'm getting super sick off some mysterious disease because. I well, you, no remember, you, mem you remember there was that going around about all commercial coffee had a little mold in it because when they roast it and shit, you know? And so maybe now when things get to such a high level, they instead of throwing these leaves away, they're like, well, don't throw them away. Put them in the batch. Put them in the backwoods. Put no one really cares. <laughs> right? I'm paying fucking... <laughs> some people are paying like $10 a pack for these. You know, they're anywhere from like 7 to 10 It's like, you know, $1, $2 per cigar. And once you throw away more of the pack than you're actually smoking, you start getting upset. And you know what? I think I'm about to stop smoking backwards. Man, you need to make your own Adam Ill wraps. I, you know, you I need think, to fill the market with, the, with a quality product. You know, I'm out here. I got the, the pre-rolls. I got the loadeds out there. And I'm sure they check the leaves before they roll them up. It's not They're not backwards, but they are tobacco leaves. But I think 2019, I am stopped. No more backwards. No more backwards for Adam Ill 2019, Kyle. Don't accept mediocrity. No, I need to. I, I, I smoke too much to deal with this shit. <laughs> Absolutely. Right, enough of my rant. Let's get into some great things because I got Kyle Cushman in the building. Yo. You already know him. He's written for High Times for uh, a couple decades. I don't want to age you. It's been like 20 years, though, right? Yeah, it has. Well, an activist, you've uh, seen the whole transformation of the cannabis industry. 
Actually, I call it the cannabis circus now because it used to be a community where everyone was with each other and we all hung out and everyone was for the same cause. We all wanted to, you know, get high and show each other's great weed and 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 support each other. And then all of a sudden, like corporations and money started coming in and people started getting egos and greedy and wanted to keep shit for themselves. And it's turning into an industry. What are we going to do? And it's all biz. And now I feel like it's turning into a circus because we've got so many clowns that are joining this shit that don't even know what fucking weed is. I can't argue with that. Yeah, I, I seen you recently. Let's just let's just go back a little bit before we get into the history of Kyle Cushman. Excuse I seen you me. recently at MJ BizCon. Mm -hmm. I just call it BizCon because there's no marijuana there. Right. It is uh, the the except out back by the back door. And, and it's great this year. They actually allowed us to smoke <laughs> weed. Last they year did. they didn't allow any cannabis consumption. That was righteous. People were getting arrested outside of the business convention last year in Vegas for smoking weed. Right. So they gave us a spot. So this year they just said, all right, you know, it's legal in Nevada. Like mm -hmm. it's legal in Vegas, we, they could smoke outside, which was cool. But there was still no weed inside. But there was a lot of people there that there was a lot of fake weed. Yeah, on display, right? Fake weed, fake oil, fake right. everything. Right. That was just hanging around, and you're just, and you know these people have never seen weed before in their life. <laughs> when I went to check in, when I went to check in to BizCon, there was like a four hour line to get your badges, even the express badges. I demanded where the line for people test positive for THC is because you know that line was going to be the shortest one there. You know, I had to stand online line and talk to a guy from uh, uh, Hawthorne Garden Group from Monsanto. Ooh! Oh, yeah, my, my girl... Monsanto's in the picture! <laughs> my girl got a little indignant and shit, and I was like, I was trying to tell her, like, like, you don't have to get, you know, you don't have to get so angry or anything, you know, it's just an old man here. And... Uh, but yeah, he it was weird. He had this uh, denial complex going on. He wouldn't even admit that Hawthorne was owned by Monsanto, even though I pulled it right up on Google right there. And I love, bro. It's written. There's published. There's articles about y'all, <laughs> and he just was like denying it. Serious. It was weird. It was like a cult. Crazy. It was. So uh, uh, how did that make you feel? Because I know you've been um, you've been probably cultivating for well over 30 years, I can um, assume. It is. This is my 31st year. What? When did you start? When did Kyle Cushman start smoking weed? When did he discover cannabis? Well, I know the year I started growing. That was 1987. Ooh, that was before a lot of these new kids were born. Yeah, my my first garden was in a uh, a walk in closet in a uh, in a uh, condo that I rented in Mount Laurel, New Jersey. What? Damn, on the East Coast too? You crazy? Kyle. Oh yeah, yeah. I was I was moving around over three states for eight years before I uh, I bumped into high times. Did you smoke weed before you started growing? Uh, oh yeah, you absolutely. Just always into plants. No. Like, oh, what's this cannabis? Let me just grow some of this and see what this looks like. No, up. I was pretty much always the 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 school pot dealer. Oh yeah. You so know? you started like high school or college? High school. What middle school? Mm, ah. I started smoking in eighth grade. Well, yeah, so like it was right, right before, after the bar mitzvah. Right. <laughs> right after the <laughs> a little, bar mitzvah. A little bit. You're like, I'm much. a man now. Let's do this. <laughs> that's what they told me. <laughs> hey, that's the culture. You know, every culture has out that celebration where you become an adult. I know there's a kitchen get for women in the in the Latin culture. You got uh -huh. the bar and bat mitzvah for the Jewish culture. Uh -huh. You got all sorts of uh, sweet sixteen. Bam, and... we out here. Yeah. So uh, you were what is like 14, 15, 14? Yeah. Was it family? It was a girl. No, it was just it was just the guys I was hanging with, and we Bad discovered influence. weed, and and pretty soon I was like, I saw the opportunity to be the candy man. You know. You're like, wait. Yeah, it's a Jew in you. You're like, wait, we can make some money. I got this. What's uh, what? Do you remember how you smoked? Was it like a bong pipe, apple can, um, <laughs> spoon? I th man, That's this a is pipe. this is a long I time know. ago. I'm just trying to this get is, this. This is um, this is uh, like forty. Uh, I can't remember. I, I I seem to remember a lot of like little onyx bowls that came from Mexico. Those okay. little white. Yeah. Onyx bowls because they fit in your pocket. Yeah. So it was probably like a little pipe, little spoon. Yeah. Little no, it was just a, it was a, it wasn't even a spoon. It was just like a stone. It was a stone with the hole in it. Right, and the the, the front end was tapered like a little mouthpiece, and they came in white and tan. Okay. And like it was the, just a piece yeah. of onyx stone. They were they carved out from Mexico, in. and they were cheap. They were. I wonder what else you were breathing in when you fucking inhaled that carved stone. <laughs> I'm just playing. We that was nothing compared, you know, and like when we decided, when we figured out we liked weed, we started looking around in nature, and in our minds, we'd see other leaves that looked a lot like marijuana leaves. We were like, well, 
No. Maybe they'd get you high too. No, you did not smoke we, random plants. We Kyle. did. No, you did not. <laughs> yeah, we did. What? Well, shout out to you because you will help us out. Because we were naive back then. You're like, fuck. What else can we get high on? You know, this is 197. <laughs> this is oh, 19. You guys were experimenting with everything back then. 80. You know, yeah. 1979. You know, we were just. We had two channels on television. We didn't have no Google. We didn't have no phones. <laughs> we just went out and played in the we street. Were, we were we were the rich kid if we had an encyclopedia at home. Yeah. Like that? <laughs> so you're on the main streets of New Jersey at fucking like teenage years, smoking weed. 20s. Oh, this 20s now when you yeah. discovered that like, yeah. I'm going to smoke random plants. What's the No, like, no, 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 no. You want, I thought we were talking about growing. No, no. I'm talking about when you were smoking random plants. Um, It was just like one time, you know? It was like, <laughs> you know, like a Chinese maple leaf looked a lot like a marijuana okay, leaf. Yeah, yeah. And it was fall, you know, they were dried on the ground, you're you like, know, they fresh rain. We're like, you know, let's just give it a try. It didn't work. Yeah, no. <laughs> I don't, that's crazy. And you guys didn't get sick or anything either? No, we didn't get sick. Right, so then, uh, so you had this passion for cannabis. You're like, I'm going to start growing it. So here you are, closet, growing weed. What did you grow in? Are you getting seeds or clones or? No, it was amazing, man. It really was. Um, I had a friend, his name is Danny Pollock. And uh, he was my pot dealer for a number of years Damn. out in Jersey. Is he going to be upset you just and, called him out? Well, there's a lot of Danny Pollocks okay. out there. That's what you come to realize, you know? It's like, <laughs> like <laughs> you know, he can step up, he can step up and say, what, what? Or he cannot, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so, talking about me, I'm Danny Pollock. <laughs> right. Oh, <I> got you. <laughs> you know? And um, <laughs> I hope he's out there. So one day, uh, when, after I moved into this new condo, that he, I came over and I showed him around and he saw this walk-in closet I had like eight feet deep, four feet wide. And he looked in there and he said, hey, if you let me grow in your closet, I'll split it with you. I'll teach you how to grow. What? And I swear, this was like 1987. And when he said that, I didn't even know you could do that. I mean, I just, yeah. I mean, no one really knows where weed usually comes from when well, you first start smoking. You just get it from whoever you can from, like, the parking lot or the house. Or... It's like if I asked you right now, hey, man, you want to grow peanuts with me? Do you know how to grow peanuts? No. You, you, okay, I don't know. I didn't know how to grow marijuana. I didn't yeah. know where it came from, yeah. what kind of plant it was. A, yeah, it wasn't It was easy... like it came in a bag. Yeah, it was foreign back then. We didn't have as much access as we do today on the edu- on like YouTube the knowledge. YouTube yeah. and Google, you know, so. All these weed sites. So he brought over um, a little Emily's Garden like the first ebb and flow hydrofarm ever came out with. Uh, it's like a, a two gallon reservoir, which sits at the top of another reservoir with a uh, little uh, lava pebbles in it. And uh, he brought over seeds. Oh, did he bring, wait a second. He must've brought over seeds. No, he brought, wow. This is a little gap in my, come on. Hey, I'm, I'm, the, I'm here. I'm, we're out here. So anyways, somehow, I my smoking story somehow, popular. somehow I ended up, cause I ended up with seeds and that's how the, the famous seeds that got on the New York times cover and that the first Adams garden, one, two, three and high time anyway. But I don't remember where the first couple of plants came from. Is that here? No, they, they, they no, we're talking about the fire right now. So they about to pull up. They're like, they talking about fire. Kyle, we're talking about the beginning of how we created strawberry shit. Let's go. No, I'm just playing. Uh, so. You're, you got your garden, you got your little so, closet. So yeah, I got this little Emily's garden with like two plants in it. With a partner. And Yeah, and and basically brought over a couple of tubs of uh, two powders. One was for grow, one was for bloom, and some pH test strips. And he said, you know, check the pH and give him a tablespoon of water. And the first buds I grew were the size of co- Coca-Cola cans, soda cans. All right. And just I, little, little mini Coke cans. They yeah. weren't like big old tall, like no, central plants. Little. No, they they were, they were Coke cans, you know? And that was the first time I ever did it. And I was like, fuck paying for weed. I'm going to grow it. Yeah. It and takes it, a little, couple months, but fuck it. It was as simple as that. It was like cut out the middleman. Yeah. And, uh, and, and of course it's, it, it becomes serious now because it started off as a, as a monetary motivation. But when you first grow your own, like, let's just say when you grow your own food, right? You, you've come in from the out, outside with a bowl of vegetables before, right? Yeah. Okay. You know, that feels pretty damn good. You know, you have to go to the supermarket for it. You know where it came from. When you grow your own meds, when you grow your own good head, space you know you when you grow your own head space that feeling of self-sufficiency it just floods your body with like it's an amazing fe- this. This is- it's an amazing feeling yeah. and it became a passion like right from the start 
you know and yeah and look where we look where and we now ended you, up here you are award-winning yeah, 31 years later geneticist and um do you remember what the strain was that you first grew i do it was um before i crossed it with it was a um it was a northern lights purple kush what yeah, yeah that's what it was nlpk yeah out here old school and then I crossed it some years later with some seeds I got from the Sensi Seed Bank, uh, which was um, the something number five. Mambo. Out. No. I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just playing. So, A lot of gardens ago. So, yeah. So the growing methods have changed probably drastically since uh, you started in the closet. Um, depends on your perspective. You know, growing is as old as the wind. And have you, like, in your 31 years, have you used, like, every method of every growing? Method. Like, cocoa, soil, every rock wool, hydro, every LED. Method. A deep water culture, water film technique, uh, hydroponics, uh, hydroorganics, aquaponics. Um, yeah, I've... Aeroponics. Aeroponics, thank you. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure there's, there's many methods. And do you have, like, your go-to, like, what you enjoy? Because I know you came out with your own, like, whole mix. You got your own you know, recipe. You know, a long time ago, I came back to Buckets of Soil. A long time ago. Like, like... Or you can't like, fuck with Earth. Yeah, yeah, really. Um, the, the flavor profile that you get from plants grown in the Earth is unmatched period the plants plants that are not grown in earth have no soul Damn. and that's why you can't cure it you can't cure hydroponic weed Damn. it doesn't do anything is that why like this all this weed that's coming out now like i feel like there's a lot of like warehouse grows corporate grows that they're just trying to do like quick clean efficient methods and like the weed is just not the same as it used to be they're lucky if they achieve a b plus because a, a lot of weed that's now all in the b general it, it, market is not the best and do you I'm, remember you remember when we called beasters but it was from out of the country yeah, beasters like meant bc, BC but, right well, and we used to come in tires it was like like rock hard and we shit. got our own beasters now we got yeah. la beasters damn that's that corporate that corporate weed Right, see, well, come on, Kyle. What's, we gotta break. We gotta keep this culture alive. We still out here making it happen. I don't like them size because you've been a part of a lot of things. I know you. You. Uh, you were a part of Oaksterdam for a little bit. Sure. Taught some classes. You have seminars on growing. What's like yeah. the basic? Like, if someone, because now it's legal, and you know, people might want to enjoy that feeling. What you just spoke about about growing your own and enjoying Absolutely. that and going to that level. What would be like the the easiest thing for someone to do to start growing? Is it get a clone, get a seed, get a, a soil, throw it outside? Is it indoor? Is it lights? Is it like what would be the easiest thing for someone? You know, I can't even really mention how easy it is just to grow it's a called plant. weed is it weed yeah. doesn't weed just yeah. grow it, 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 it you know it's it's a matter of <laughs> it's a matter of once it becomes a you know if you're going to grow an orchid right you're not just growing it you have some kind of level of uh of respect for this plant because you already know it's hard to grow and you've decided to grow an orchid well you you get that way after you start growing marijuana you don't have to be that way from the get-go. You don't have to grow the best tomato on the block, the uh, the award-winning pumpkin. You know, y you know, just grow it. Yeah. And 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 satisfy yourself. It out. No, it, you know, so well. I'll get. I mean, I'm I'm not I'm not going to go without giving you some tips. I'm just saying you can just do it, and of course, try to do it as close to nature as possible. Not because I'm some hippy dippy dude who's, you know, from the old school. It really. <laughs> <laughs> when's <clears throat> excuse me when when have you ever tasted a really good tomato that came out of a hydroponic you know when you when you when you when you taste a really good tomato it came out of the ground yeah and like when my friends go to their backyard their personal gardens and make like a salad from what they've grown like it always feels like it's way better than a store bought or if you buy or like farmer's uh, market type shit if you buy organic tomatoes from the supermarket there's a relatively high chance probably 90 percent chance it was grown in the ground and of course on top of that it was fed organically so you know there's a difference from that hothouse tomato and it's the same thing with weed um you know you you you, you sterilize it and bring it down to nothing but salts and um you strip away 
the soul and the, 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 the ultimate potential that the plant has. It's just uh, taking away its life. You just you just you just can't cure it's a- salt weed. It just won't it just won't cure. It just gets old. Now organic weed, I, you I, can I cure. Just let that, I just let that melt in. Real you can quick. cure for years. You can cure. You said I cure it for a month, three months, six months, nine months. You can cure it for two years, and it's like wine. It just keeps getting better and better. Ooh. You have any hydroponic weed around for two years? It's, it it, it's cinders. And it's because it, it's, it's it has it, no the color soul. color changes. It has no it just, soul. Oh, that sucks. Don't take my soul away. Bring back the soil. I'm loyal to the soil. Loyal to the soil. Whoa, I'm loyal to the THC. You know, so this industry is definitely... Um, whack out right now circus we got clowns out here it's a whacking wackadoodle circus it, people are copying each other claiming it's their shit but i still believe that you know it's like it's like post prohibition everybody just wants a drink everybody's been through prohibition and they don't care if it's budweiser right now nobody's demanding you know ipa stout they're just like give me a fucking beer give i want to get five percent right, right and and <laughs> And a couple years will go by, and the the, the palate of the consumer yeah. will uh, catch up to us. Will 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 grow, and um, they'll come to appreciate a finer cannabis. And and we're already out here enjoying the finer, and they'll catch up to us. Of course. I mean, it's just like 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 you said, it's like wine. You can go to like the liquor store or the big market, and you get a two dollar box of wine, or you can get that nice two thousand dollar bottle of wine. And, two and buck it, chuck. Two buck chuck. You know what I'm saying? Shout Charles Shaw. Oh, we could get that shit too. What? No, but uh, it's just crazy to see the evolution. And, and also the innovation of cannabis and the whole industry because dabbing just became uh, a big thing not even a decade ago. Dabbing went in a year from Clairol hair irons that you'd buy at Rite Aid yeah, and put some wax paper between yeah. it to thermoelectronically $40, controlled. $40,000 machines. Right, people right. Are, yeah. and, and kids are getting out of school with degrees, with, chemi- with, 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 with How do chemistry you degrees and using it. Thing? It's amazing. Well, look. You can't you can't get in the way of uh, progress. Because innovation is great in this industry. I've seen this industry like absolutely just, just keep getting better and better with technology and methods and just and you consumption know what? and the more people that are exposed to cannabis and cannabis products, the more peaceful, the closer we would come to world yes. peace. So if 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 people need a nice clean product that's in a nice clear liquid that has a fla- flavors of watermelon and berries and goose mumps in it, go- gooseberries, snozberries, yeah. whatever. Well, then they, they, they have a right to do that. And I, we have a right to say that it's ridiculous. But um, hash, hash is wonderful. I'm looking at some really wonderfully home-pressed rosin right here. Hash, rosin, I can't even say it. See, you didn't even know I was high until now. Hash <laughs> I like hash. I like backwood rosin, but I don't know if I'm going to do that anymore. Backwood rosin? Yeah, I'll like roll it backward and I'll squish it. No. Yeah, and then what? I'll just dab that. It's 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 an amazing flavor. Everyone like just doubts it and then they try and they're like, all right, it's actually good. Especially if you smoke blunts. That that reminds me of something really weird. I'm innovative too. Alcohol Kyle. enemas. Oof. Yeah, that's <laughs> totally different. Come on, man. Come on, man. It just reminds me that humans will think of anything. What kind of student were you in school? Were you? Oh, like- I quit. I quit my second week of my sophomore year in high school. Junior year, my second week of my junior year, I quit. Yeah, in I was sixteen. School? Yeah, you're like fuck school. Yeah, I was. Fuck Where school. was this? I thought I knew everything. Is this in New Jersey? This was in uh, um, Yorktown Heights, New York. Okay, so you're an East Coast cat. I'm an East Coast cat. Okay. I'm a New Yorker. I'm an upstate. I'm a little little upstate New mouse. York, from- New Jersey. Yeah, I grew in New York and New Jersey. Uh, pretty much those were my stomping grounds. Did you have like a favorite subject or were you just like, fuck school? I often, I often muse that if my parents hadn't have gotten divorced, I probably would have become an accountant and I would have been married in my thirties and I would have been divorced by 40 and had four kids and, you know, and, and, uh, so I'm one of the rare people that was really thank that I've always been thankful that my parents got divorced and I became a bit of a rebel and became Kyle Cushman. Yeah. (laughs) I'm the weed plug. What's up? Who needs that? <laughs> I got it. Plug in. It's a good gig. How and, was, what and, were prices of weed when you were uh, connecting your neighborhood? Oh, man. What, like ounces, like $100? It was like... Um, you were getting kilos for like 
It was $125 for a four-fingered ounce. What is that? What's a four-fingered ounce? Well, because we didn't even have Ziplocs back then. We had those ones you had to fold over the top, okay, the sandwich yeah. bags. Yeah. And so if you could lick the top of the bag and fold it over without having to roll the bag, that was considered a four finger bag. Okay. So it was various weights depending on the bud. Yeah. And then yeah. you would just eyeball it in the dub bags. Like, all right, I'll just fill up this dub bag. No, we had Do those, I like this guy? I'll give him a little less. We, we had those little hang up scales, you oh, know. Yeah, you yeah. know? Started, right. That's when I started trapping. I had one of those little. Oh, of course. That was a long, long time ago, though. Look, you out here. Things like, have changed. Yeah. That was, that I don't was, sling weed anymore. <laughs> me neither. I just smoke it and I shout out all the growers. And I want to shout out you because you came out with your own, your own nutrients which you launched a couple of years ago and you've won various cannabis cup awards with using this. It's the, uh, vegan matrix. You got it. Vegan matrix. Yeah. Think organic, veganic. It's vegan matrix. Vegan matrix. Yeah. And that's like what? No animals. No. It's, pets. It's exactly, it's, uh, the, the, the best thing about it is that, uh, we boast heavy metal levels. They're a thousand times lower than even organic weed. Organic weed, um, is fantastic. I've been, and you know, I don't, I don't mean to put, put it down. It's just that, um, veganic is, uh, cleaner on a mass scale because we're not using animal products and, uh, our produce tests in the parts per billion instead of the parts per million. Okay. So that's a so thousand times less. It's cleaner, you know? All, all, all the, the guanos and the piss and the poop is all loaded with antibiotics and hormones and pesticides. And that's not good? No, it's not good. Man. I heard pesticides get you higher. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's just crazy because uh, I've always been about... The reason why I started the podcast many, many years ago is because... You know, I was being a bud tender and I was learning all these things about cannabis that a lot of people didn't know. And it was about, you know, like when you look at weed, what you're looking for. And a lot of people aren't familiar with PM and what powder mildew looks like on a nug. Yeah. Or uh, or some people don't, can't recognize mold. Some <clears> people, uh, you know, they can't t don't know what they're looking at when they're looking at weed. Like, what am I looking for to make it look good? So it was just kind of like a, I just wanted to bring this little perspective of of education to uh the uh, the podcast audience back in 2009 and it's uh i'm here now relaunching it because everyone's got back to me and kyle cushman is in the building and a war winner with the vegan matrix and you brought me some weed I to did. smoke of course because i think i interviewed you many 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 years ago on the podcast the first one many years ago yeah i think it was like 2000 like 11 12 <laughs> It was like 11, 12. No, it was like 14. No, because I wasn't in that studio. I remember which studio we used. It was like 2012. Wow. The first time I did. Remember That's the possible. Remember it was a studio with like I had the living room set, we had the green screen, and then we had that other room. And it was, it like, was, it was like a, the it was like a 10 minute, five minute drive from that place I used to work with. Yeah, right there. Yeah. In that area. So <laughs> this is what what strain is this? Well, you know, I had to bring my uh my namesake, the strawberry. The strawberry? Yeah. So how did you tell me while I get this weed and just uh examine it and love it and roll it up, not in this moldy leaf, but uh smoke it. Uh, let me know how how did Kyle Cushman become the strawberry man? Was this a cross you made? Did you come across some seeds where you're like, this is it. I'm creating everything off this strain. I love it. This, um, this is like several of the sliding doors in my life that have led to really big things and led me to always be thankful. Um, Ooh, every, so sweet. Yeah. Uh, it's got a really nice nose. Is this a soil? It is. It's the. It's it's my new veganic super soil. Veganic and it's uh, sun kissed. Is it all it's, made with love with it, the sun? It, it's a full four hours of sun a day. Ooh. Yeah, I had to move it around the backyard to chase the sun, really. But okay. But uh, yeah, it was a it was a labor of love this summer. I really I knew that it was going to be a, a a bit of a nightmare. Um, yeah, it's been the weather out here in California, especially LA, has been kind of crazy the past couple uh, months. With the fires and the rains, yeah, the but wind. but you know, but I still drove over here with the convertible top down today. It was seventy degrees. Get it, G. And so uh, I can't complain about the weather and the firefighters. Oh my God, the California Cal Fire! I think every single one of them should get a Congressional Medal of Honor. They should get like free life insurance for their families for life. 
Um, yes. I mean, it's insane. You know, the, the most, the most courageous, the most, Oh God, they work so hard. Do you know that they work 24 hour shift? They work 18 hours on six hours off. Yeah. They sleep on location. Yeah. In the, in, in on the, actually, in a tent, on a cot, you yeah, know, and actually, work for weeks at a time. They don't do it for the money, man. No. Nope. Oh, I actually, man. uh, we actually know someone who comes to the secret sesh, uh, often who does work for the California fire and tell, like sometimes he won't show up and we realize he's sleeping outside in the little cot trying to fight these fires so we can Look, all I I so got I shout him out all the time shout out Kyle I, this, this, is, this isn't <laughs> his name's Kyle too not is you, it? Kyle, oh. his name's Kyle Kyle you know, the jerky guy. This this isn't this isn't <laughs> like some just like uh, just blowing smoke. Pardon the pun. I didn't mean it like that. Seriously, I saw these guys stop the fire on the ridge before my house, what? and I got look. I know everybody's been through way more. Been through horror. It was terrifying what people went through. People have lost, um, and I'm I'm just describing what I went through, which wasn't nearly anything harrowing or anything, but it was amazing from my front driveway. Well, the night before, I went to sleep with flames out my bedroom window from the West Hills fire. I could see you flames in my bedroom just, window. Shut up. It was, and you they know, didn't evacuate you yet? You just saw it? Like, we oh, were, should we, we leave? We were one less than a mile from the evacuation line. If they had moved it again at all, we would have been out. And the only reason we didn't go is because all day long, we had been getting evacs as it got closer. And I just, I trusted Cal fire that you know they would evacuate us and we were able to cautiously go to sleep that night one of my sons joked you know you want us to sleep in shifts tonight <laughs> oh you know God. and and but and and then the next morning from my driveway i saw it come over the hill to calabasas oh, and i'm on woodland hill so that's one one more mountain range away it's from like a me freeway exit right and yeah. i want and, and i'm sitting there watching it and i said if it comes up over the next hill we got to go and sure enough it came up over the next hill and I'm like, I'm about 30 minutes from calling this, from telling the family we got everything in the cars. You already and, packed, and, and you already yeah. got everything. Well, we were right by the front door. It was going to take a few minutes. And I was like, why wait? You know, and literally then I saw, I watched standing on this wall in front of my house. So I had a good view. I watched the helicopters come and those big planes drop. drop and they dr stopped the line right there before my eyes. And I was like, what? I was like, talk about infrastructure, like Jeez. working, like. Like, thank you. That's so crazy. So, yeah, man, that was... <sighs> Fire. Oh, yeah. my goodness. It was crazy. I mean, the weather out here was crazy. And I felt bad. I heard there was going to be... And especially up north, too. There was the, the campfire that was happening. People were joking about having, like, ashy weed and ash OG and all this because <laughs> there was so much land that got burned. I know a couple people whose farms got burned down, too, that were just in those hills. So Buddies lost... Property Everything. in Sonoma last year, yeah, the big fire, and so I lived up in Mendo one summer where we it was it was dark the whole summer. It was never full sun the whole summer because there was so many fires up there. It's uh, that's why I don't live in a canyon. No, I can't live one road in, one road out. No, no. I need, I need when the panic house. comes, I can't I can't be part of the panic. I have to have exit routes. I had four exit routes. I could have gotten out four different ways. Well, so I'm gonna uh, have two tone roll up that strawberry so we can smoke it. Yes. So uh, we sidetracked a little bit. So how'd you get a, get to the strawberry? Mm. How'd you get to the strawberry strains? The how'd strawberry the so so. I had a good friend when I moved to New York City. I got a job writing for uh, High Times, and uh, at that point I had to give up growing because I couldn't both be an underground grower and a writer for high times i couldn't handle that right. that much so right like, i'm getting the paycheck so i switched back to flipping pounds and i had a good <laughs> and, and and i got growing i'll just and, and so i had a friend mailing me pounds in uh through the usps from uh oregon uh <laughs> and they would show up on sunday mornings which was great and then i had a friend out in connecticut who I'd go drive to, it was about a th two and a half, three hour drive. And I'd go visit him and he'd set me up and I'd go visit him every other week or so. And one day he says, hey Kyle, he says, I got a good friend of mine. He says, he's always wanted to meet you. Would, could I take you over his house? He's got to grow. He knew you were like high times writer. Right. This play. is what I did back then. It was like just to go over right. and this give a couple. This is before social media. Well, so. it was my way of giving back. It was like, if I could 
give you a couple tips about how to grow weed because I knew and you didn't that yeah. I changed your life. And yeah. then it became, that's why I volunteered for Oaksterdam and Peace and Medicine, did all that stuff because I realized I could ch change people's lives. Yeah. Well, this changed my life. So I go over to this guy's house and he's got a piece of weed the size of my pinky nail. My pinky nail is not very big. It's like, like, it's like a half a bong rip, right? And he's like, I'm sorry, man. I tried to save some. I didn't know you were coming over. This is all I got. You want to do a hit? And I was like, sure. And I was already stoned anyways. You're like, I'll get some flavor. Right. And I, and, and then he took me down the, the, the stairs to his basement from his kitchen and I remember a really, uh, really pretty, I, <laughs> see the guy's called me back since then. I'm always afraid he's going to go, hey, Jeff, it was a great garden for back in the day. <laughs> it was great. Shout you, out to Jeff. There's you, a lot of you out there too. You, so you, 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 Straubs. We call them Straubs. Damn. <laughs> And so he, 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 he molded reflectors with aluminum foil around floodlights. And, and I would say, you know, it was, it was pretty, you know, home constructed. And uh, I looked around and I really, I really didn't have anything worthwhile to say. Nonetheless, as I'm leaving and I'm walking up the stairs, he said, hey, man, do you want one of these strawberry clones? And I turned around and it was literally a Dixie cup with a plant that was two inches tall and didn't have two pinky leaflets on it. Okay. Right. This it was little nothing, baby, this yeah. little, little tiny thing. Like he just, yeah. And he's, and he's just like, and I'm like, sure. And I took it just to be nice. In soil. In, in a soil, okay. in, in a Dixie, Dixie cup. cup. Yeah. yeah. Just, just, I don't think red solo cups had been invented yet. <laughs> <laughs> it might not have been a thing. <laughs> And when did, uh, when did uh, solo cups I don't get know, mentioned? right? Shit, you and your fucking Google. <laughs> you can find We're a out. Different generation. Uh, so I took the plant and I drove home three hours back to New York. Oh, I asked him for a paper bag from his cupboard, right? To put it in a paper bag. And he gave me a little lunch bag. And I put it on the floorboard and I drove it home and I get home to New York to Brooklyn and I take it out in my kitchen, I swear to throw it in the garbage because I'm not growing anymore, right? It came out in the 50s and then became uh, uh, more popular in the 70s when they went red. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Right. Sorry. So. Instant satisfaction. So <laughs> I smelled strawberries from that little tiny plant. I like picked up the paper bag and I smelled like smelled like a fresh pint of strawberries. And I'm like, no fucking way. And I, for a second, I thought he duped me. Like he like gave me a bag. I'm like, I saw him take it out of the fucking cloud. This is fucking crazy. This is the little clone. This is this little clone. It, it, it made aroma. it had an aroma that you made. Think it might have been from the room of him bringing the shit down, or you think it was from the actual. Plant? It was from the clone. That's crazy. It was crazy. He but didn't see, like, like if it didn't terpenes or air freshener on it. If it didn't, that clone might have never gotten out of Connecticut. Okay. I mean, it, might, it definitely. You know, it definitely wouldn't have become the second biggest delivery clone in New York City in like two years. That strawberry cough. It's like. So we got this little Dixie cup You and you take it. Where do you take it? I take it over to my German friend, Andre, who is, uh, he takes very fancy pictures. And uh, I said, uh, you'll grow this for me. And he says, what do you mean? I'm growing the super silver haze, last year's cannabis cup winner. And I only have a, you know, an apartment in Manhattan. I have this much growth. Yeah. And I said, trust me, grow this. And he did. And um, Did he still grow the silver haze too or just the strawberry? He said, I'll get rid of the haze. After a while, it was all strawberry cough. Hey. And then he started cloning it out to everybody. And he gave out hundreds of clones. And then, so then the reason, so... The reason why there's two reasons why people think I created the strawberry cough. One is that Jason King wrote that I did in the Canna Bible. Okay, I think I have all four <laughs> books of that. And I don't know why he did because I told him the same story, and I presented him with a bud that didn't fit in a wide mouth two quart jar that I had to squeeze. And I told him the story. And he still said Kyle Kushner creator. And I don't know whether it was artistic license or whatever. And there's another reason, though. There's a big reason. And that is that when I moved from New York to California, I gave away everything I owned except for basically my music, my cookware, my cat, my clothes. I even gave, gave away all my smokeware. What? I didn't like want all the old... Bongs, pipes. Yeah. yeah. Scales. I was going to start everything. I can't, I'd say it was my clothes, my cookware, you know, a couple pots and pans, uh, my music, my CD collection, my cat on my lap. <laughs> and, and and a trunk full of strawberry cough clones in a Whoa. Buick Park Avenue Ultra that I rented, big trunk, and I don't remember it was a hundred or two hundred clones, and I just gave them out in every city that I knew people along the way. 
from from California, from New York, to Brooklyn, California. to uh, to Mendocino. What ca- what's what year is this? This is two thousand four. Okay, and that's when I dropped it in Denver, and I dropped it in Michigan, and I dropped it. The you know, yeah, it started becoming so, recognized nationally. So if everybody said, where'd you get that? They said, I got it from Kyle, Kyle Cushman. Cushman. And then he gave it to two friends and said, where'd you get that? I got it from Kyle. He gave it to two friends. I got it from Kyle. I got it from Kyle Cushman. It became the KKSC. And that's, Kyle Cushman, Strawberry Cough. That's And then you win awards the with it. And then uh, you're out here growing with your own mix with it. And then you get other strikes too. You get the Cherry Cough. Well, you know, I was doing some breeding for a while, and uh, that's really where my love is. It's it's amazing. You can create so many new strains in a short period of time. Um, but as it became uh, a financial endeavor, a solely, you know, when I lived up north, there was a lot more room to play. A lot of land. And then you move to the city, and everything becomes financially based. And so... Uh, you know, so, but interestingly enough, I'm just, I, I have my genetics parked at a few different places. I got a few collabs going. Yeah, because you have uh, other strains too. <laughs> you got the uh, Silverback Grape Ape, the Starberry, the KK Star Dog, the Jurassic Haze, and of course the Adonai OG. Mm-hmm. And we got, we got a brand new one out called Strelka. What is that? That is a, uh, a brand new collab by me and Subcool. Strelka? Yes. Was it like a strawberry? Strelka is, interestingly enough, is, uh, you remember the name Laika? It was the first dog in space. No. Okay, so the Russians, they they, Trivia. Didn't, they, they they sent these dogs up into outer space, and the first dog in space was named Laika, and we originally named it Laika, but then we found out that Laika died in space. Yeah, that's fucked up. They didn't bring the dog back. They just let it freeze out there. That's fu- they just let him out in space? Yeah, they shot any- him out there and got telemetry and stuff, but they never brought him back. So then the was next- he in a, Was he in a dog space suit? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is this real life? Are you fucking with me, Kyle? No. Yeah, it's true. I can look this up right now. I and then Strelka me. and Belka, they went up next and they landed them back safely alive. Yeah, they had, they had to bring two for one. Right. Yeah, they fucked that. Right. It's still fucked but up. But Laika, the one that they, everybody knows the name of, just... Is that for, L-Y-C-A? Is, is a, L-A-I-K-A. It's a pup, oh, like as a pupsicle, still floating in out, outer that's space. That's fucked up. <laughs> 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 that's <laughs> so so Strelka just came out uh sub cool the dank he's uh he produced it for us with uh my star dog and he crossed his um starfighter onto it and we got the first space mutt starfighter star dog right we got space mutt so you got I that. wanted to call it space mutt nah that's fucked up <laughs> I mean, I'm still stuck on Laika, dog. I'm that's sad. <laughs> we gotta light one up for Laika. Imagine us. We named it, and then Is we had to change the name. Is there a movie about this guy? The they dog. Make a movie about the dog, Laika. The hey, dog is first dog in space. Yeah, and then like at the end shot is just him just floating in space, just chilling. And then like you know, fifty years later, we go back up in space and we just see him, and then we defrost him, and he's alive again. Because if he's frozen, if he's frozen. Yeah. Then basically you could bring them back, right? Because don't people like freeze themselves so they could come back, like cryogenically freeze? I've seen it in a lot of movies where they just like, yo, bring me back. It, it, it's an idiocracy. But this dog's just going to go arf. No, we might have technology by the time we get him back that he could communicate with us and we'll understand what dogs are saying. <laughs> I'm sure someone out there is trying to work on something where in a dog barks, they could tell by the tone or by the like what they're actually saying. You don't think so? Uh, maybe. You maybe. don't think so? Maybe. They, they come on. Look, they have a fucking. They gave us a device in our hand that Look, we can do anything we want with. When 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 a dog can bark into my phone, my my smartphone, and I can know what it's saying, then you don't have that app. I don't have that app yet. Arf. It's, it's called Arf. Look it up right now. <laughs> dog translator. <laughs> Somebody probably did it. I bet you it's gonna it's gonna come soon. It's in movies. Didn't Disney have it in one of their movies? I think it was a cartoon, my friend. Yeah, but anything you see <laughs> in movies is always what you will eventually get in real life. It's just them giving us a warning of what to expect. That way we're not shocked when it just comes out in our face. You do realize sometimes they're not serious about it though. Hey, you know what Pablo Picasso said? If what? you can imagine it, it's real. That I believe that. So you know what can, Alexander Shuldigan said? There's no sensation that you can cause in the mind by artificial means like drugs or whatever that 
if it couldn't couldn't ha if the brain couldn't produce that feeling, then it couldn't do it. It doesn't matter yeah. what you how you're using to get there. You know what I say? What we only use what like ten percent of our brain. Even right? if we use all that <laughs> two. shit. I think it's up. two. I think it's yeah. two. They they restrict us. It's all the chemtrails in the sky. It's all <laughs> technology around us. It's everything we eat. They just take away our brain power. That's why there's people living in like mountains that are so spiritual. It's because they have more of their brain power and they know what to do and they know what the fuck the real shit is. I miss walking around on grass, barefoot. Little, oh man, on mushrooms. On mushrooms. Talking to the earth. Letting it tell you what the fuck is happening. No you shit. You know, last week I had Eben on here and he was talking about his whole DMT experiences and his whole spiritual guidance and uh, how he's like detoxing using all these like hallucinogens and natural. He's going to Peru to do like an ayahuasca cleanse. Uh huh. So like this shit, it, it's really, it's really. I know. I heard about all this shit, it, man. It's like, it's, it's real. I it's, mean, culture has been doing it for thousands of years and they've been all right without technology, without any of this shit that we think we need to survive which is fucked up because they're making us live in a, a way where we are dependent on shit. Like if your cell phone dies, you go a little crazy. You're like, fuck, hey, hey who got a plug? Hey, you got a charger? You got a charger? You got a charger? That's real life. The power goes out at your house. You get really uncomfortable. Yeah. You hot water and you're like, fuck, where's the hot water? I need to take a shower. You get so pissed. You're like, fuck, now I'm gonna have a horrible day. They didn't have fucking hot water showers back then. You have to go with the fucking lake and just bathe maybe catch a fish be like yeah we got dinner ma you <laughs> <laughs> there's an old quote that puts sums that all up you know we went Where's in one strawberry we went, in a, we went in a hundred years from buying less than one percent of what the average person buys and producing uh i'm sorry ten percent and ninety percent producing ninety percent to the other way around we all buy ninety percent of what we make of what we use we, we did that in a hundred years and we buy we, instead of like instead, this, of, instead of making things right and, like you know, making blankets we or, get our satisfaction because we recycle things <laughs> 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 so damn we have just become so dependent on the value of currency that we just you know when I when I was a kid I'm such an old man when how I, old are you I'm 52 you're not that old. 50s and old. But you know what? Nobody can call me a kid good. anymore. That's what I realized. Once you hit 50, nobody can call you. Even old people can't call you a kid hey, no more. Kid. You can't, you, hey, youngin. You know? That's great. Right, how do you feel about all the youngins in the industry who are experts on everything and haven't really done shit? I don't want to look. Oh, look! I, feel, I want to. Look, we're all, we're look, doing a podcast. I feel so, I feel sorry because when I was a kid, <laughs> I got to build tree houses and go karts and and what tree you mean, forts. You built a go kart? What do you mean? You build a go kart? You, you know? Just, what, got you see what I'm just, saying? No, no. What? Just 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 a just a just a coaster. You know, because I lived on a hill. Oh, oh, okay. So like every so one summer would be the summer of go karts, and we'd all try to build the best go kart. And when it would break, we'd rebuild it better than right. it was before. Like, we'd, like learn, we'd, rascals, we'd, like we'd learn. We'd learn. Yeah, kind of. You know, I was and 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 without that upbringing, you know. Of like of self sufficiency, you liking that, aren't you? <laughs> Lip smacking, good. <laughs> yeah, without without that self sufficiency, you know, I don't know where I'd be. You know, I I I, uh, I don't think I could have been a three state illegal grow hopping <laughs> madman for twelve years without getting myself in deep shit. Yeah, you know, you have to experience life on the streets. Yeah, you know, you, you're. It was so just, if you weren't gonna, be, if if your parents didn't split and you didn't become like this rebel, you think you would have been an accountant? Is that what you wanted to be? You're like, I'm gonna be. I accountant. loved numbers. I was. I had them all in my head. I could do it all. I could do all these uh, uh, figures that the the teacher asked you to do without like writing it so out. So was I math could, like your favorite subject? Were you it, like it was. It? it was until I became a complete. Until you started getting high. You're like, yeah. fuck school. This is bullshit. I don't need any of this. <laughs> well, the numbers. Why do, do I need to know why y equals x when I'm fucking already have a calculator and shit? Fuck this. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I was old enough to drive. I was gone, man. You were making money. I was hustling. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Because once you, you know? start making money, you're like, what the fuck is school? School's just trying to teach me how to make money, but I'm already making money, so I'm not going to spend money how to learn to make money. When I'm already making money, I can make more money making money. Because you need money to make money. Unfortunately, that? unfortunately, that all makes money. That all makes money. That, that all makes sense. Because <laughs> I, I was, uh, you know, I started consuming cannabis at a young age, and then I realized, you know, when I bought my eighth, that I could sell three grams of it and get a half gram to smoke out of it for free. 
and I'm still smoking those three grams with my friends I sold it to, and I'm making money, and then I can buy another one and do the same shit. And That's then, what it was about. It was about smoking weed with, all day and not friends. paying for it, you yeah, know? Just, they'd buy some, you know, they'd smoke some. Yeah, that, you'd get some for free. You'd smoke some. And you get the good weed, and right. you know, we'd always get the better weed than your friends. And then, you know, the eighth turns into like an ounce, and the ounce turns into <laughs> a pound, and the pound turns into 10 pounds, and all of a sudden, you got plugs all across. People Next thing you, you know, up for this way, and then you're like, fuck, I, I'm on the radio, I'm doing TV shit, I can't be selling all this shit, and then you stop, and then you're just like, I'm just gonna smoke it. But you right. just started growing it, and you're like, fuck, I'm writing new with this shit, so I'm just gonna smoke it. And I'll visit your thing. I'll start consulting companies. You had what? What'd you have? Karma Consulting? You brought up, uh, uh, what was it? The uh, University of Peace? You know, I, I don't know what that is. University Wait, what is of Peace? This? What is this? Uh, Peace friendly. and Medicine? Wait, let me see. Taught earth friendly counterculture classes using organics and veganics at Oaksterdam and Peace and Medicine. Uh -huh. You earned 13 cannabis awards. Uh, they were all won with Vegan Matrix. Of course, you were. You, you just, you're the well, man. Well, you know you what I learned? You contributed to advances and cultivating the purest, cleanest medicine possible. You know what I learned early on? I learned that I, I like teaching as much as I like growing weed. And uh, it's funny because my dad was a teacher for 25 years. And uh, he was an English teacher. He taught English as a second language. He wasn't like an English teacher. He taught English to Spanish-speaking kids. But nonetheless, he was a teacher for 25 years. And that helped me become a writer for High Times. And then when I started realizing that I was actually teaching people with what I was writing, I started wanting to do it in public. Yeah. You know? So that's what High Times was like my finishing school. High Times taught me how to write. And I also learned public speaking. So then after high times, I started Karma Consulting and I helped a hundred or more people build their own home grows up in Mendocino. Yeah. And I was preaching compliance back in the, you could grow 25 plants and you could have 25 for you, 25 for your girl, 25 for your roommate. I had 75 what? in my house legally checked by a Mendocino sheriff at one point. We out here. And, and you know, so teaching is really what has really sustained me uh through uh just you know the years when i gave up growing weed for money yeah and now you uh you got your own kyle cushman uh the grow show with kyle cushman the grow show the, the as yet to be started grow show what? with kyle cushman you yes. got a blog on kylecushman.com you're on the social media kyle cushman 420 so so teach teach them out there if someone's listening and they want to start growing what's the easy what's like the basic what do they need to do like the first thing they should do like well just get the if, basic you, if, you, if you want to grow weed i know you're spending money on weed so if you're spending money on weed take a portion of that and buy yourself a light and then get yourself a little soil neutral soil is the best pro mix is good because it's neutral it's not loaded with what you don't know what's in there and then just get a good bottled fertilizer. I recommend Vega Matrix. Hey. <laughs> and then just give it follow, love. And then just follow the nutrient charts. Real easy. We have a chart for indica, sativa, and hybrid. And uh, you know, there's a veg chart. There's a mom chart. There's a clone chart. There's a vegetable feeding chart. We grow amazing vegetables. And um, you know, and just hopefully you're in a state where it's legal. And if you're not. I advise you living a hundred miles out of, no, I can't advise that you grow, you know, yeah. if, you know, depending on the, the, your, the state you're in, but, but if you are in a legal state, which there's 25 or more of them now, I think it's 25 plus the district of Columbia. You should, if you are allowed to grow your own, you should grow your own. It's not hard. And maybe you're only going to get a couple of ounces off the first one, but those couple of ounces are going to pay you back for that minimal investment Ooh. that you made. And you'll learn a lot on the first try. You'll learn a lot on the yeah. first try. And Absolutely. there's a lot of shit you can look up. Now, let me just ask you real quick. It's a two part. If you, uh, who is the the best person you got high with? Like who you thought like stoner boner moment like that you spoke with you with? And then dead or alive, who do you want to smoke with? Oh, dead or alive, that one was easier because it came right to my head. John Lennon. Hey, okay. I I miss John Lennon at least once a week. He, I, 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 I listen to his music. It just, it, it, uh, John Lennon. Do you uh, play any instruments? I do. I play the drums. Okay. So probably... I left home at, I left home at 16 to be a rock and roll star. Hey, you are I, a rock star I joined star a band now. and well, I found another way to be on stage. <laughs> yeah. You know, I did. I did find another Can't way. Cannabis rock star. And a, a weed liberty. A they weed might liberty. Say. Yes. That's, that's what we are. You weed liberty. Celeb stoner. Yeah. 
And then who did you get high with, like being in the industry, like as a musician, um, artist? You know, another, I know you spoke with a lot of people. Uh, you know, another musical um, event came to mind. Um, wow. No, now the, the, the real in-person one came. Definitely when I smoked with Alex Lifeson of Rush. What? Yeah. yeah he became a personal friend. And um, that was amazing. But I, I also remember, um, anybody remember Blind Melon? Yeah. Shannon Hoon? Yeah, Shannon they had Hoon, that, that that song. No rain, and uh, uh, but they had, they did a couple of really good uh, alternative albums. They were really hard edged. Be louder, Adrian. Don't be scared. And uh, yeah, and is that my life? Yeah, see, that <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I use the melody. I mean, I Galaxy Five Hundred and uh, I know, I just, and uh, uh, a lot of really good. But but so they had just hit. And I was, I had just started working for High Times and my best bud, Steve Bloom, yo, what up, Steve? Yeah. Bloom he, yeah. he was the music editor and he was getting free tickets like mad. And so he had con con tickets for two concerts that night and he was going to see Aerosmith at the garden. Right. And he had tickets for Blind Melon at the Roxy or something, some yeah, little club. It. Right. And so, but he had to walk yeah. me. There you are. There you are. Thank and, you, Andrew. And he had to walk Sound me. Promoted. He walked me and my girl in there and there were these four four tables on stage like for super ultra VIPs and we walked up on stage and then I had a package of weed that I brought for the band and we rolled up a and I didn't get to go backstage but he went backstage and he came out and he said dude they smoked your joint and they loved it everybody smoked it except for Shannon and then they came out and they performed the whole album because at that point that's what they had they had right. an album and we were like right and there like, we were on the stage song, you're like, and oh. And I f instantly fell in love with Blind Melon. Um, hey. And so they did the whole set on, on that purple Kush. Yes. Kyle Cushman out here just living the rock star life. Appreciate you coming through. I learned a lot. Yeah, man. I'm sure you come back soon. We can talk about a lot more. I want to shout out to, can I give a personal shout out to all the growers out there though? I don't care if you're growing one plant in your closet or a thousand plants or you got a thousand acres without you guys, none of us will be getting high. So I appreciate all the growers out there. Keep making it happen. Uh, Purple Haze Radio, appreciate y'all for having it. The podcast, Kyle Cushman, follow Kyle Cushman 420. Yes. You got YouTube, yes. IG, Facebook, all Yes, that. I'm easy to find. It's, it's, you can find him, read his articles, learn a lot, grow some of his weed. I'm smoking it right now. Peace, appreciate love, and rock and roll. Oh, any final words? Peace, love, and rock and roll. Got you, yeah. See y'all next week right here at podcast. Bye.